Let's now have a look at altering and filling in the fields in our door and window or door schedule. Same process for a window schedule if you were doing one of those. First of all, we'll notice that they've imported them in a random sort of order. So what I'm going to do is just click down here where we've got the sorting and grouping and sort it by the mark and have it in ascending order. Click OK and now it's numbered them for us. I'm just going to make a quick change by here as well because I don't want the assembly name. I actually want the assembly code. So I'm just going to move that one back over there, click on assembly code, pop that one in there and make sure it's second. OK. I'm also just going to reorder this a little bit and put the width up by there. So it's width, height, then thickness. OK, and we can see it's just reordered those for us. Now, what I'm going to do is we've got a lot of blank columns by here. If I go back to my ground floor plan, click on door number one. So I've got the external door. OK, there we go. Now, what you may wish to do at this point is edit type and duplicate it and rename it. And what we're going to do then is have a look at a number of the parameters and descriptions here. So we've got identity data, fire ratings, costs. Now, I'm just going to make up a few figures here and a few things. So fire rating, I'm going to call that FD30 um, just for the sake of it. OK, cost. I'll put in a cost by there. An assembly code, again, some sort of code maybe a description, the manufacturer, and you can start populating some of these fields and that will help bring those across. So when you've selected the door from the manufacturer, specify in an exact type of one, you can do that. Click OK. Also in the properties by here, um, for this one here, I'm going to say it's a light oak UPVC. And I'll do the same for the frame as well. OK. Now let's have a look at our door schedule. And we'll see that it's already filled in those parameters for us. We've got glazing missing. Um, on subsequent ones, the ones that are in there, can also be selected directly from there. So that's just something you can do. If you've got the same door repeated, it will automatically populate those fields as well. So for example, if we go to door number three, so let's have a look at that one. And let's click on this one, yep. Oop, click off, click back on. And again, if we do this as a um, painted softwood, and we'll do the same by there. Okay, again, edit type, and you probably wanted to duplicate this before we do anything. So we got all the sizes, then we've got fire ratings. So these ones are just say the 15 minute ones, which is not much really, but here we go. Assembly codes, um, these ones can be IN25s, whatever. Okay, cost for these, we'll just put 200 down. Okay, look at the door schedule and notice how it's filled in all of those as identical doors. Um, now, it didn't fill in those for some reason, but you can do that fairly easy. Now, where it's got glazing by there, you can just type in N stroke A on ones that are not glazed. And then it just appears on the drop down menu. So that's fairly straightforward. By here, we got the glazing on that door there. So that one is our external door again. Now, if there, there is glazing by here, so what we could do is just do uh, 
actually a double or whatever other description you want to put in there. And then again, when we look back over here, we've got clear double on there now. Now you could have other things like safety glass or obscure glazing, etc., or triple glazing. So that would populate your fields. Now, what we have got is this section here with the door panels, and I don't particularly like it. So I'm going to highlight the three of them and group them together. And then it creates this extra row. And I'm going to call that door panel. And then on each of these, I'm just going to delete the words door panel. And it just looks that bit tidier, like so. Um, if you wanted to have these as a single parameter, I can show you that quickly. I'm just going to leave it like this for my one, but let's just click on there and do a combine parameters. So what we'll have here is I'll just do one for those two. So I've selected them, brought them in, make sure they're in the correct order. And then this would be width times height, change that to an X, delete that one because there's nothing after it, click OK. And now notice you've got the width times the height and all of them are displayed like that rather than being in separate columns. So that is another way of displaying that. I'll just change it back. Now, finally, the actual layout or sorry, not the layout, the visual appearance of your schedule. So let's highlight the whole schedule. All right. There we go. And let's give it some borders. So thin lines, wide lines, we could just change those. OK, maybe you want OK, just to do that. Now, another little thing that makes it a bit easier to actually read is the shading. Um, oh, sorry, not the shading, the appearance here. So if we click the edit appearance down there, notice you've got first row stripe or second row stripe. So you can stripe the alternating rows. So I'm going to tick that. And then you can pick your color and I'll pick um, something like that, but just tone it down a little bit. There we go and say, OK, click OK. And now let's just click off there. Oop. All right. And we can see now that those are alternating colors, which makes it a bit easier to just follow the column or rows across when you're reading it. So that is how you can um, create, well, sorry, edit the different fields in your door and window schedules and just play around with the colors and so forth and the layout and populate all your fields by filling in the information on your doors. So thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next time.